Hey guys, Mike from Pattern Traders. It is uh, today's Thursday, actually. I made a video yesterday thinking it was Thursday. It's January 25th. I'm going to make a quick video for a few of my members that asked me how to identify and analyze a high time from chart based off of um, um, fair value gaps and order blocks. So, on a regular chart, oh, the only thing that I do specifically looking at a high time frame, like a weekly level, open up your FEGs and open up your order block. These are the only two indicators that you need for a high time frame analysis and then you can identify your levels precisely from these two areas of interest and then you can actually hone in on a lower time frame using Fibonacci levels or supporting resistance levels or maybe Shimoku clouds and whatever the case is, whatever you like to use, right? There's so many variables that you can use. Um, okay, so we're currently sitting on a fair value gap. Fair value gap is going to be an imbalance in price. Uh, when price usually has an impulse move to the top side or to the bottom price, it creates an imbalance and then you, price has to gravitate towards that area to rebalance the chart, right? So we are sitting on a weekly bullish fair value gap. This likely will give us a bounce back up to anywhere between 44, 45, and then from here, likelihood is probably going to be a rejection. If we reject, then we're going to probably head back down. But anyway, I'm not here to make an analysis of where BTC is going. I want to show you guys how I make my own analysis before I actually go down to the one hour, four hour, and 12 hour. And this is literally all I do on old coins and on majors. I open up the weekly, two week, three day, five day. It's all I use. Sometimes I might use the six day over the five day because five day seems like it's a little too easy and everybody uses it. So I'll go to the six day to see if I see anything, anything off. Same thing as the daily. Everybody uses the daily, so do I. But predominantly, I've started using the 21 hour, which gives me a better visual because everybody uses the same daily levels, right? So, I identify my fair value gaps, the bullish ones. This is your this is your bullish order block. This is your bullish fair value gap. This is your bullish fair value gap, and this is your bullish order block. This is your order block. This is your bullish fair value gap. Same thing over here. I'm going to draw it nicely, but I wanted to show you guys quickly what I do, right? Fair value, sorry, fair value gap. And then on top here, this is your bearish order block. And then this is over here is your bearish, bearish FVG. So I identify these levels and then I hone in on the lower time frame. So now as you see this, let's go to the actual chart that has them. Here we go. Turn off your fair value gap. And those who are asking me about how to use this, this indicator, I do bullish, bearish, the same color. Because I don't really care. I could identify it by, by eye if it's bearish or bullish. I don't use any of these features, but in the in, in the in the event that you do want to use these features, let me show you how they look. For those who don't. So the fair value gap indicator, by the way, a new version is coming out sometime next week. Just just it's gonna be an, uh, a customizable one, so you could actually customize the, the gap size. You could do <clears throat> gap zone, which actually highlights the whole zone so you know exactly where the fair value gaps are, as you could tell. Price never broke under this bullish fair value gap. Price never broke under this bullish fair value gap. Price never broke under this fair bullish fair value gap um, and whatnot, right? So you could identify it this way. You could also highlight remaining gap, which is going to tell you how much of the gap got filled and whatnot, as you could tell. See how this is completely empty, right? Um, and then for the order block indicator, all I do... <clears throat> I turn off the exhaustion levels unless I'm looking at the lower time frame, but the exhaustion levels are very important to me. Like, for example, you see how you made a high here and then you went, took the high and you dumped. You know for a fact that once you make this high, this is going to act like support. This line is going to act like support. Um, so, on a lower time frame, the exhaustion levels are awesome. You could also use them on a higher time frame too. They, they, they work very well. I just don't want them on my chart. And then for the POC, I'm usually always on daily. I usually always use a daily POC so I could identify which ones have not been ta tapped or taken. Okay, but for now, for the means of analysis, just keep show candle. I have these colors completely wiped out. All I want to see is the bar, I don't the, um, the zone. I don't want to see any lines. And then I have the demand zone trigger on the wick. I don't have it on the open, even though a lot of people do trade on the open. It does work as well. I prefer to highlight the wick as opposed to the open okay so oh i just put it on the open <clears throat> let's go into the actual analysis now go to your chart 
All right, starting from top to bottom, weekly time frame, I highlighted the bearish order block, the bearish fair value gap, the bullish fair value gap, bullish order block, bullish fair value gap, bullish order block. Out of all these that you see on your chart, the most important level for us to identify right now is the $29,000 and $28,000 level. I'm so confident we're going to eventually go down there. I, I, I'm already stashing my money so that when we do happen to go down there, I'm going to unload on the whole market. More likely than not, because this already offered, this bullish fair value gap already offered support. If we do happen to break this zone over here, these two combined, we're going to end up going a lot lower. This particular area over here will not be an easy bounce because support has been already offered multiple times throughout the course of, if I'm not mistaken, three months, right? How many months has it been since we were here? Uh, wow, it's been more than three months, guys. 209 days, you know, so a lot more than three months, probably like a five month mark here if not more <clears throat> right so think about it this way guys the, the the high time frame point of interest right now this minute is going to be down here now there are going to be bounce levels in between it's gonna it's not going to be easy to lose this particular level over here because this was like the spinning candle let's just call it a spinning candle before the breakout on the weekly time frame so when we do happen to come down here and bounce it's going to offer some significant move back into the old range, which is going to be anywhere between 41 and 45,000. I'm not saying that it's going to give us all time highs, but it could do a deviation and do something like this and then come back down over here, right? I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just identifying the levels from a high time frame perspective, from an analysis perspective, where I think price could potentially go over the course of 12 months. So if you do happen to just close everything out, open up your order block, and open up your FVG. This is all I did. I identified the most important key levels based on fair value gaps and based on order blocks. I know for a fact that up here, when we do happen to come up here, we're not breaking this with ease. This area will likely end up making, creating a significant rejection and causing roughly about over a 30 to 40 percent move to the downside this has never been tapped before it is fresh you have a fresh bearish fair value gap or fresh bearish order block so unless we get some kind of like uh, you know fundamentally driven news for us to be able to bust through this i think it's going to be a local top for quite some time um all right go back to this level now what am i doing in between now that i have identified the weekly level I go to my three day <clears throat> and then I open up the same indicators and I say, okay, what are we doing on the three day? Where's my fair value gap on the three day? Oh, look, we just filled it and we're ready completely above it. Doesn't mean much to me. It just shows that we just officially filled a three day order block. I mean, a three day fair value gap. Open up your order block. It doesn't give me any information. Let's close this out. Okay, let's actually do this as well because we don't want to see the zones. <laughs> go to your lower time frame, go to your daily. <clears throat> what do you see? there you go now on the daily this is going to be the most significant level right below you which is going to be the point of interest closest to the price action that is right here so even though your your high time frame levels are right here between 26 and like 28 29,000, within a low time frame perspective not really low but short term perspective you're looking at the same concept you can identify your daily bullish order block daily <clears throat> bullish FEG and then make this gray because we don't want this to be green okay and that's that man we're not breaking this level off the first attempt I'm telling you that much unless something really bad happens to us <laughs> We're not breaking this level. So this is all I do. Literally, this is all I do for altcoins and for majors. I identify the high time frame. And then from here, my my perspective is, all right, so now I got my bottom, my supports. Where can we bounce up to? Okay, so we're right under a bearish FEG. And here is another bearish FEG, which is the most important one because this is the one that's between us and the new high so this one doesn't really matter to me so i'm going to make this yellow because it's not important it is but it's not really important to me this is the most important one and i'm going to make this blue the blue fvg is the most important one why because that is where we trapped all these longs 
and then we collapsed. So when you have an impulse move up, you know what, in this sense, let's make it down. If we have an impulse move down, similar to this over here, right here. So say you go up, trap, come down, break structure, right? We broke structure, right? This is your structure. Let's identify it. This is your structure. Let's get rid of this right here. Change in character, okay? That's a change of character, right? So you broke it. You're going to go back up to retest this level, and you're probably going to make another another dump. You get above 41,000, you're definitely going to 44, 45, okay? That's just basically the key line. You get above this, you're going straight for this. And then from here, if we don't happen to make a higher low, we're going all the way down here. It's just the way it is, in common sense, right? So you break structure, you're over here now, and then you're going back up, and you're going to retest this fair value gap. So on this side, where is it? The fair value gap is right here. When you retest this, if you don't make a higher low and you make a you break the back under 41,000, you're going straight for this level over here. This is how imbalances play. You go up, you trap, you come back down. Once you break structure and you have an impulse move back up because you had the impulse move down, this is your impulse, this is going to be your FEG but you have no price action anywhere in this particular price, you're likely going to make a, a lower low, pretty much, all right? So this is all I do, guys. Literally, this is all I do. And uh, one more thing I want to add to the video, I don't want to make it too long, but how I use FEGs and order blocks is if you go on, so now that you identified this area, if you go on the lower time frame, like a four hour, to see how it looks, even though it's a little messy, bear with me. In this four hour, if you just do this, there are, there, there are low time frame bullish and bearish order blocks. Like this is a bullish order block. So this is even more confluence. So if you have, if you have a daily FEG and then you also have a four hour order block, which is bullish, you know that this is going to offer a scalp. Same thing with over here, guys. Now look what happens here. You have a bearish FEG here. So even if you go back up, you go back up and you take the liquidity on top over here, right? at 42.2 low time frame liquidity it's low time frame so it's not going to give you a crazy move but it could potentially take out this high it could take out this high and go something like this take out this high hit the order block the bearish order block because it's red and then collapse so there's so many ways that you could see this as long as you have your high time frame analysis already written on your chart you're able to zone in and go to lower time frame and i get completely lost so that's what I'm expecting right now for BTC on a higher time frame. It all starts on the weekly and then it goes down to the daily. I'm telling you, a lot of times a 21 hour offers a lot, a lot more visuals. Hold on, let's go this way. Doesn't happen always, but majority of the time it does offer a better visual, right? It does offer a better visual. Like, let me see if I can find something. You can tell right here, this is going to be a big slap, guys. This, this whole big order block, this whole big FEG over here into the order block is going to be a big slap, unfortunately. And this one over here as well. This order block, this is between 42 and 44, which also confluence with the, the four hour. Yeah. Four hour liquidity is at 42.1. So once we tap this 21 hour order block, likelihood it's going to give us a dump uh, between 42.4 and 42.8. Now we got to hope that that dump is a retest of 41 and that this sticks. Guys, cheers. Any questions, feel free to DM me. Regarding the indicators, I'm making a whole new series of how to use the indicators the right way. I'm taking a lot of analysis from from uh, ICT and I'm incorporating it. There's new versions that are going to be released that are going to be easier to use and auto-populating uh, just so that we can identify the levels fairly quickly. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Cheers.